Well, hello, Montrealers. Welcome to the premiere, the world premiere of Friendship Revolution. I got to say, I'm really excited to present this incredible film, which showcases 60 leaders, each one of them with most special abilities to break down barriers and ensure inclusion in our very own city. Now, some films have the power to inspire Buyer, but this one can really transform us for the better. And if you don't believe me, wait till the end of it. So are you ready for this? Are you ready? Come on! Let me hear you! I can't hear you! Of course I can't hear you. It's pre-recorded and I'm sitting in my apartment. Of course, I don't expect me to hear you. Anyway, let's get to the film. Ladies and gentlemen, start your hearts. Here's Friendship Revolution. Excluded from their school yearbook, that's what one Roseville couple says happened to their special needs twins. A mother outraged tonight after she says her special needs daughter was denied entry to a Treasure Coast business. She completely ignored me. It made me feel like I'm worth nothing. A local family stands up to their child's school district. Their son has special needs and the school told them they could no longer teach him. Schools were told, uh, were to would tell parents no. There is no place in this school for your child. They are very mean. That there is simply not enough support available for their children. Discrimination against a young girl with autism. That took my breath. She shouldn't be treated like that. In this box, there was a leader from the past 100 years, a powerful person, an aspiring person. The world wouldn't be the same without this individual. What it takes to be a leader? What characteristics do you think that takes to be a leader? Being a official leader, uh, how, how, do you, uh, how do you express, how do you, you should talk, and you should show respect to people, whether they actually are. To be someone that people can look up to and follow. It doesn't take one person, you know, it takes an entire team to have leadership, really. Sometimes the quietest people are good leaders also. Taking initiative and stepping in when somebody needs you. That yes, we're thinking small projects, but big impacts. And your project is going to be able to have a ripple effect, and we're all working on this together, different angles, different areas that we're passionate about to break the barriers of social inclusion. The ideas up here are incredible. Big Brother program at school, um, pop-up shop run by people with special needs, short film, a social experiment. I love that. Um, okay, so our idea was to do a pen pal program between kids at a regular high school and kids at possibly um, Summit School. To like showcase that, that um, people with special needs are capable of working you know as well finding some students that we could educate about the different types of disabilities out there because everybody gets nervous they get like anxious and anxiety whenever they have to do a job interview first go to schools but after post them at the friendly circle and we'll reinforce inclusion um, and they would sit down after cooking eat together and discuss barriers for inclusion and other ways to promote inclusion within Montreal. They feel like so excluded uh, and they um, would need to be a part of something. So that's what we are going to do. This will be our revolution. A special revolution for the deaf, the hard of hearing, and the hearing alike. My brothers and sisters, when I say FC, you say revolution. You ready? FC! Revolution! FC! <laughs> 
There's gonna be challenge, there's gonna be conflict, there's gonna be adversity, right? A revolution isn't something that's easy. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. So you go to a retreat, you get motivated, you're surrounded by like-minded people, and you say, there's something I'm trying to do. But now you gotta take that and go do it. People, people think that, that the people with special needs they can't be part of society, but we can be part of society. The Revolution Project is basically where Friendship Circle, we get to work with the Canadian government on projects to help the inclusion that we have at Friendship Circle here be in all of Montreal and hopefully in all different places around the world. This idea of really um, thinking how can we at the Friendship Circle really bring our message far past the physical boundaries of the Friendship Circle and far outside of this building and just affect as many people as we can. And, and there's really an opportunity to promote inclusion in those spaces. That everyone is working together to bring out the values, to bring out the goodness and kindness in, in everyone. When we bring people with and without special needs together, they bring out the best in each other. And the more that people are surrounded by people who think a little bit differently from them, see the world from a different perspective, um, they grow so much from that experience. This was my opportunity to make an impact on my community that I should definitely take it. We divided into nine different groups and each group um, was tasked with coming up with an idea that they thought this is the way to break down inclusion barriers. A very wide range of perspectives are being brought together, which I think was really helpful. Our first ideas were kind of just all over the place. We kind of started discussing why we all wanted the revolution. We discussed what we all felt passionate about, what we felt was missing from the community. I have personally never worked with um, individuals with special needs that closely on a project like this. And make sure that it's clear exactly what we're doing. You know, like the employer should be clear that mm -hmm. this, like we are expecting them to hire at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, so we need to speak to the three companies. I think it's just amazing to see the ideas they come up with on their own. And this is what leadership is all about and, and coming up with uh, ways of how to connect. My name. Yes is ju o e e n is that how it is? Yeah? Okay. My personal life experience, there have not been many uh, areas where I can just learn sign language like that. So I kind of thought to myself, I probably should uh, help I uh, make it a thing in Friendship Circle with uh, helping teach sign language. And it turns out the rest of the group agreed and that was how our project came to be. Uh, my goal is in this class is to uh, help teach more in ASL, American Sign Language. My name is L I R A Z. Z. I love to dance. <laughs> My <laughs> name Adrian. is. No, what you are you? Bring the deaf community and uh, the verbal community together and uh, be able to freely interact with their uh, language barriers being in the way. A sentence? Okay. Um, I think that sign language is cool. So we have CCRW, Ready, Willing, and Able, OMED, Pronexia, Quantup, and many other organizations that are advocates of inclusion and the workforce. And we are really lucky to have 18 networking teens helping teens a project from the revolution of the friendship circle that are here to guide people of their own age to the next steps towards their career and their future after 
a couple surveys and talking to a couple people, we kind of thought that individuals with special needs and without kind of wanted more information about how to get a career, uh, questions about CVs, questions about interviewing, and from then on, we kind of decided to have a networking event. This workshop first, it's meant to help you self-reflect. Self-reflect, what are your core beliefs? What are your core values? What do you preach for in life? And here's why we want you to have that self-reflect. Like a lot of things that school doesn't per se teach us and that a lot of people felt they were missing. So I think that they definitely got answers to some of their questions that they were asking about CV writing, about really how to apply for a job even, or different interview questions, how to go to an interview. And I think that a lot of people got a lot of their questions answered. So I hope that they enjoyed it as much as we did. Wait, keep this. We need to tape this. Ten, nine, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four. Give me more tape. Let's go, go, go. One of the things that we really tried to focus on was like a highly scalable initiative, not just something that we could do once or an event of sorts uh, that would take a lot of practice every time. We wanted to think of something that we could organize and we could plan and we could do repeatedly over and over again. Have you heard the word disability before? Okay, cool. Yeah, so the word, a disability is pretty much another type of difference, right? So some people are better at running, some people are better at math, some people are great at speaking French, and uh, but some people have different weaknesses. What we ended up coming on was speaking to elementary school children about disabilities and the idea of inclusion. So we chose elementary school children because we feel like that's the age where uh, students start to learn a bit about what disabilities are, but they're still young enough that they're very impressionable. So, uh, what's someone with a disability capable of? So what we're trying to emphasize here is that the disability is one type of difference. And it may add some additional challenges in one sense, but can also bring some, uh, some great things in another sense. So you have an interactive activity where uh, each group is given a bag of materials and they have to build the tallest tower they can. And the catch is that the instructions are given on varying levels of clarity. So one group will have an instruction that says, build the tallest tower you can, whereas another group will have uh, just a picture of a, a skyline and they'll have to figure out for themselves. Uh, another group might be given like a long paragraph on like the art of construction and build, building towers and things like that. It's very easy if you have good instructions, just focus on what you have, like you understand some things that are going on and just kind of go with it and not really look around and re uh, take care of other people. However, it's extremely important to realize that some people uh, might have more difficulty get understanding those instructions. Lots of different challenges that people face with their dis because of their disabilities and just going about your everyday life and not caring about anyone else isn't the best way to approach it as like a lot of people won't be able to succeed that way. You should include people even if they have disabilities. I learned that to treat everybody like you want to be treated. Yes. You should always let them be included. That we should treat people how we want to be treated. We are so excited to have Friendship Circle here today presenting to our students about what it means to have a disability and why inclusion and kindness is so important in building strong communities. Honestly, we thought the best way for people to talk to each other is over dinner. You know, people love food, people love eating. In order to include everyone, not make some people special, some people eat something different, we were like, everyone could just eat the same thing. So that's why we came up with the Vegan Supper Club. It was like an opportunity for everyone to really eat the same thing, break down all barriers that were like present in terms of food, for example. So that's like, I guess, the values that we're trying to promote. That's why it's vegan. And I think we tell people that as we're like having the dinner. Half the people there are without disabilities. Half the people there are with disabilities. 
And we want to expose the people without disabilities to people with disabilities if they might not interact with people like this in their day-to-day -day lives and just come together and make food together, do something nice together, talk while they're doing it. This, this whole project really, really um, taught that like, uh, personally, but especially like the whole group, like a very, very important lesson. So start cooking dinner with uh, people from the friendship circle and help each other out in the cooking process, share their life experiences while they're doing it. And at the end of it, we bring them to a dinner table to discuss the food they made and what they learned from the Since experience. This whole thing is about like trying to figure out how to include everyone, not just at the friendship circle, but in all of Canada. Maybe some people could give some examples of like how they don't feel included in some things in day-to-day -day life and what can change about that, like what things can be done to make that better. Yes, always think about the others in the conversation too. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. So that you would make them feel included, mm -hmm. talk about other things that other people did, not just yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Just make sure you have good social skills. For me, I'm a really nice person that, that I, I like to talk to some someone. Mm -hmm. I'm really nice. It's just speaking openly about a lot, um, not having certain like subjects be taboo or to have kind of a like an elephant in the room that you like don't really talk about it. Um, to foster oh, those conversations and open up a discussion is a great way, mm -hmm. I would think. None of us are complete unless all of us are included. These are the cookies that they prepared. Everything that we made for our pop-up cafe was, was prepared and packaged and sold by people of all abilities. We made cookies and muffins and we put them in individual bags and on each bag we had a sticker that had one of four quotes about inclusion and friendship. Well, amazing, amazing is that how this organization works with individuals with special needs that are able to produce this. I just told about the cookies that were made uh, by the kids that have special needs and that they're trying to emphasize that everybody's same on the inside, even if we have differences on the outside, and that we're here to encourage them as well. Awareness about inclusion in the workforce for people to see that people of different abilities are capable of doing positions that you might have underestimated them about. Um, and just like having people interact with us and talk to us and we were, you know, sharing our stories and they wanted to hear about the group and everything. And it's our job as, as members of society to make sure that we've created an environment that facilitates ev inclusion for everybody, no matter who you are or what your abilities are.
the first thing would be a little bit of shock, just sort of coming face to face with the person that you've been talking with for so long and finally getting to put you know, a name to a face. And then I think that they would pretty quickly realize that there's nothing different between the two of them. They can still go and enjoy the same things. Okay, so we're going to be doing, we're going to be having a pen pal exchange with a student at the My group's revolution project idea was to create a pen pal program between students in um, a school um, with special needs and then students in a regular school. We figured that it would be good to do it in grade six or grade seven when they're, um, they usually do pen pal programs then um, with schools in Israel, so we figured that would be a good idea. And then also to have a meetup day when they would finally get to meet their buddy that they had been communicating with for several weeks and just see what it's like um, and talk with somebody that has special needs. Excluded from like uh, like from like when I was in high school, and um, I would often see all my friends huddling up in groups and talking. You Belong is a program that my group and I started with the Friendship Revolution, uh, that was meant to sort of tell people who come from difficult walks of life, whether it's their economic background or their social background, their cultural or ethnic background, that they're not alone. We're going to choose, or someone can volunteer to read out their baggage and someone, someone else's baggage and then they are going to speak about it and what they think. Wanting to self-harm and fighting through the feeling every day. Be with that person and invite them out and let them know they're not alone and that um, you'll be there for them to listen and you're not there to judge and that you accept them as the person that they are. At our event we had four panelists who each shared their own story and we had sort of a little Q&A session which opened conversation and we got to see things through their perspective which is, they had a very unique perspective because each of them had a very different story. And then after that we played the baggage game. Whoever had any emotional baggage, psychological baggage, they would write it on a paper, they would crumple the ball and then they would throw it. So you don't really know whose baggage you're picking up. And someone will pick up another person's baggage and they'll open it and they'll read it. And then they'll give their opinion on how one can improve upon that or their thoughts about it or whatever it, whatever it might have been. When, when we progressed to high school, like it like started going a little bit bad at the first three years. Felt a little bit alone a lot, a lot of the time. Like I was there, but I was not. Like you ever get that feeling, it's like, like you're with your friends, but then like sometimes when they go hang out, you're kind of just like not there. They don't include you. Well, mental health is kind of like um, what's inside of you. It's like thoughts. It's um, like even memories, and uh, and all of that is like um, it's kind of like something that is uh, stated to be. Um, something very personal. And then someone could choose to claim the baggage, claim it as theirs, right? And say, this is my problem and I appreciate your insight or I appreciate your input. Then that could spark a conversation, right? They could communicate with one another and talk about, you know, their feelings and what they can do about it and become friends, right? Right, but so overall throughout the entire hour and 20 or 30 minutes that we were hosting this event, we were all communicating with each other and learning about each other. What's up guys, my name is Steven Abadi. I'm here with my buddy, Jonah. Today we are here with the Friendship Circle working on our very special Friendship Revolution project. The goal of this video is to spread inclusivity and awareness in our community and around the world. So to do this, each of our friends are gonna have one of these cards. Each card matches a description of each of our teammates. We will be handing out these cards to strangers. Let's see what happens. Hi, yeah, I'm 
Sammy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's um, your name? I'm D. Hi, I'm Sammy. Nice, <laughs> nice to meet, meet you. you. Are you Sammy? Yeah, hi. What's your name? I'm Ruth. Nice, nice to, meet, to you. meet you. Great name. So you want to come sit? <laughs> sure. You could say like I'm lazy and truth be told, it's become like really, really hard now that I'm in university trying to balance out a social life and everything. Find different ways to stay motivated and keep on track. <laughs> and Here's so, my wife. She's oh. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so basically, we're trying to find different ways for me to cope with my laziness. Sometimes there's a core to where the laziness comes from. It's actually like an avoidance of something deeper that needs to be addressed. I mean, but it's easier to do something fun instead of address that item. Right. That could be financial, that could be social, that could be spiritual. Like there's a broad okay. range. You want For me, I do have social anxiety. Mm -hmm. It scares the living heck out of me. And so coming back to school, getting into that mood, and then uh, like I spend a lot of time home. Right. So getting out here, talking to you, that's really scary for me. But like, no, that's I, like, so great. Like yeah. I'm, I'm myself a lazy person and like I'm in a really, I'm doing psych and neuroscience. Of neuroscience. Yeah, wow. and so I'm trying to find different ways to motivate myself to actually get up and like do work and whatever. So, so I was wondering. Wait, wouldn't help? Pardon me, are, are you Cassie? Yeah, I'm Cassandra. Oh, cool. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, my What's name's you? Tim. Nice to meet you. Because I come off super confident and super happy. Um, which I am a very happy person, but I do struggle with a lot of insecurities. I think that, um, do you think that society puts any pressure on us these days or? I, I don't particularly blame society for my, okay. my, my personal, my, my insecurity about the, okay. like going to the school or anything. It's like, okay. it's something that I know will be, will be very stretching for me yeah. to stretch my boundaries. Yeah but I do know that it will make me a stronger person That's awesome. overall. For sure. I think we all have insecurities. I have insecurities. Yeah. And the things that feed my insecurities are when I compare myself with other people. Um, I work at the Friendship Circle for people with special needs. So I think working with such diverse um, group of people and seeing how each characteristic um, that's different makes someone so much more beautiful um, is really has inspired me to look at myself that way so uh, that's good Sabrine's your name Philip? Ah uh, yes I'm Sabrine Hi Sabrine Nice to meet you N Nice to meet you So I hear you're in love Yes yeah Tell me about that Well I, 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 I'm in love with this girl and um, yeah, we f I f first met her in, 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 high in high school. Yes. And it's been over 10 years, yeah, as That's friends. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, yeah. when marriage has lots of ups and downs, right? Yeah. Just like anything in life, any yeah. kind of, you have a relationship, but when you are, have a close relationship like that and you're yeah. living all the things of life together, then, you know, yeah. sometimes there's highs in life and sometimes there's lows in life. And I think the, the nice thing is having a partner to to walk through the highs and the lows together. Yeah, I was something I, I like yeah, about her. Yeah, she was me more than ever. And yeah. she's like, do you have a favorite type of food? Well, yeah, I, I, as for me, I, I love yeah spicy spicy food. Spicy? Oh, I love spicy food. Yeah, a nice naan bread with some butter chicken. Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Max? Yes, I am. Hey, cool. I'm John. Hi. Nice to meet you. You too. Well, I got this uh, paper. It's called yeah. Friendship Revolution. Yes. You're super confident? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. If you're going to do something new, like, what advice would you give to people? You know, if you're going to try something new and you're really like, unsure about that, like, what advice? Try it out, see if it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm in the choir for people with special needs. Cool. So we sing we sing everything. Sing everything. Yeah. Awesome. Where do you get where do you think you get your confidence from? Having having the experience with performing arts, being an actor and having the experience with performing arts okay. keeps me not nervous. Cool. I grew up with stage fright. Stage fright, really. But now it's now it's gone. That's good, man. Yeah. Do you know that? Uh, oh, it's really good to meet you. You too. 
Thank you so much. Can nice I give you a hug? You. Oh, for yeah. sure. Give me a hug. Oh, I love that. I worked hard to make sure that everybody was that everybody was together, and we were meeting, and we were finishing our project. I feel like my team achieved our goal and what we and we want what we wanted to do to spread our message. Uh, so we've spoken to three schools so far, um, reaching about 650 students, and we aim to get about a thousand by the end of the school year. And like we plan to continue this project like far past next year and really, I mean, the long term goal would be like incorporate it and get people at different friendship circles across North America, spreading the same message and going to elementary schools and really promoting that idea. By teaching them, them sign language, we hope uh, to uh, bring inclusion to uh, further socialization between the two groups. The Revolution Project was a youth led movement. And that's really important because um, myself and others are an example to our community that we are very strong individuals that want to improve the community and make sure that there's more inclusion for people with special needs and improve the world. As for me as a leader, yeah, it is great experience to have because it's nice to be surrounded with people we love. It's not as hard as people think it is. You don't really need to treat someone special to really include them. You can more come up with a solution that caters to everyone as we did with our vegan supper club. I'm sure people will learn a lot and get involved. We have really been given a lot of tools that will help us in the future. And I think that we're ready, the youth are ready to do everything they can to pursue their passions. And I think that it's really important to give them that opportunity. But inevitably, yes, I think that big change will happen. I know that it will definitely happen. In the name of all the beautiful children and the adults, the parents, educators, and the whole community at large, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to express our appreciation, our thankfulness, uh, to the wonderful government that we have that has enabled us to, to be able to, to make these miracles happen of helping so many, so many citizens um, become better people and, and to bring out the goodness and kindness in, in everyone. I think we're so fortunate to live in a country where the government not only believes in inclusion, but supports it in such a hands-on way and recognizes that the youth have this power to transform the entire community and really giving them that opportunity to be leaders and step up. And it's just been such an honor to work alongside them. Thank you to the Canadian government. Thank you, the government of Canada. I want to say a big thank you to the government of Canada. Thank you so much, uh, the government of Canada. Thank you to the government of Canada for giving us this great opportunity to spread the message of diversity and inclusion. To facilitate a project that gives us the chance to share the message of inclusion and diversity and to make a difference in our community. I learned a lot and I know that what we are doing is going to cause change and going to leave a lasting impact. So thank you so much. Now, wasn't that incredible? Congratulations to the revolutionaries and to Friendship Circle for pioneering extraordinary initiatives like these.
Okay, now stay with me, folks, because here comes the interactive portion of this film. These 60 young revolutionaries are an amazing example of the power and impact we can have for the better. This is a revolution we are all being called upon to join. Inclusion means everyone is needed, and that means you. So what action will you take this month, or better still, this week, or, or better still, tomorrow, to spread inclusion? Why don't you share them with us in the comments below? I'd like to also invite all the young people watching to join the Friendship Revolution 2.0 by applying for a leadership role today at Friendship Circle. This unique opportunity is open to Montrealers with or without disabilities between the ages of 15 to 30. You can sign up in the link below and you'll receive a call about this and other Friendship Circle volunteer opportunities. Well, it's been an honor to share this with you, but it's way past my bedtime. Big thanks to the Government of Canada for partnering with Friendship Circle to make this possible, and even bigger thanks to you for believing that change is indeed possible.